<laughs> Welcome to Post Gen Con episode number five for the Throne of Angels video blog. As always, I am your host, Derek Osborne, here to bring you a world in miniature. Now, we're long overdue on this one. I've got notes, I wrote some notes, and I've got my Gen Con follow-up on the table in, in front of me here. So we're gonna we're gonna start this one with the fact that, like I said, I'm long overdue. It's been a while. My buddy Shades a few weeks ago reminded me of that fact. Mark Burlove at Gen Con reminded me of that fact. So gentlemen, well, we'll go ahead and dedicate this episode to you two. All right. So our last episode was May 10th. There were a number of things in uh, May, June, and July that really kind of kept me away from things. May, my daughter's graduation. So, senior in high school. Graduation is a big deal. We had a huge party and lots of people and family in town for like 10 days. And when I say family in town, I mean the whole house literally was filled with people for like 10 days because we hosted um, my wife's, or my brother-in-law, sister-in-law, and their families here in the house. So, um, like I said, big party, uh, lots of family, the, the, the graduation celebration, uh, the senior party, you know, I mean, all that stuff. You guys, if, you know, well, everybody's been there or is going there or has kids there. You all know what I'm talking about. So that really sucked up most of the, the, the last part of May for me. Now, unfortunately, during that time period, I ruptured a disc in my back, which um, if any of y'all have done that, pretty much throws a wrench into anything uh, that requires mobility. I literally was unable to walk too terribly far, you know, maybe from the kitchen to the living room to lie back on the floor uh, for three days. So it was a painful experience, wasn't very uh, happy with it, but you know, we're on the road to recovery. In fact, I'll probably start my workouts again here in the next day or two. Um, unfortunately, in July, my mom passed, uh, and that obviously took up the entirety of July. I had to head home. Uh, take care of those things and manage, you know, her end of life stuff and spend time with with my immediate family, my brothers and my sister, and then obviously all the, uh, you know, near immediate family, aunts, uncles, and, and that kind of stuff. So um, that that covers July really for the most part. Well, we're now into August. Just got back from Gen Con, literally. Uh, I am a day and a half rested. I've got all the stuff that I brought home with me, some news here, and, um, well, you know, let's get to it. So what I have got on the list of notes to start out with, things that have my attention. Well, I don't have them here in front of me, but I'm going to go over them. Age of Sigmar. Age of Sigmar, outside of um, a project that I've been working on, which I've got a video coming probably in two weeks. Uh, I built a dead zone table for Mantic Games for their booth. I, I chronicled that as best I could, but you guys all know I'm terrible at actually keeping that up. So it'll be a short video, but it'll at least to give you an idea of what has been occupying my life on the hobby side for the last six weeks or so. Other than that, though, the Age of Sigmar really have, it has been eating up a lot of my time. I've been reading the books. Um, I bought, you know, I mean, a ton of stuff. I've got a huge Sylvaneth army sitting over here. I also have um, an, an absolutely monstrous uh, Stormcast army. I've also got the Flesh Eater Quartz box in the old closet. So I've been going kind of crazy on the uh, the Age of Sigmar. Guild Ball, I've got three teams that uh, need to be assembled. The Morticians, the, uh, the Hunters, and the Fishermen. Played some games of that, played some at Gen Con, played some at Origins. Uh, man, it is uh, it is a riot. It's a lot of fun. If you guys aren't playing, check it out. So, terrain. Uh, I've got a ton of terrain going on. I, as I showed you guys an episode or two ago, TH Miniatures, fantastic little Kickstarter. I'm actually going to do a project with what they sent me to coincide with, with this right here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Purple Lion Creations. That'll be the next video that you guys see. I've got that one already filmed, and uh, it's a giant box of stuff right here. Super impressed. Really looking forward to showing that and sharing that with you guys. Uh, Battle Zones. Again, like I said, I've got a Dead Zone table project that I did for Manic Games coming. I'm going to show you guys literally the process on that. 
uh, color selections. Um, I did some lighting and some stuff with uh, power play. So we'll have kind of a feature on that one and it'll probably be in two weeks or so. Some things that I'm looking at uh, outside of that. New models and games, well, I'm checking out this thing called Arc World, right? I haven't finished this book yet, but once I get through it, I'll probably grab myself uh, a starter force and, and uh, check it out a little more in depth. My buddy Sean Dooley says it's a great little game. Him and I, we like generally the same stuff, so I'm going to trust him on this one. The art style is fantastic. It's really kind of throwback to late 80s, early 90s games workshop type fantasy stuff. Looks pretty cool, so I'm going to check it out. I missed the Kickstarter, but I know they've got something coming up here in the near future to add to it, so we'll probably explore that in the near future as well. Mythic Battle Pantheon. I've actually got a press kit right here from Gen Con. I've got the game Mythic Battle sitting right here that I'm going to show you as I talk about that press kit in a second. Dust 1947. As you can see on the shelf, I busted out my dust. 47 is coming here next month. New book, new cards. Uh, and so we'll start doing some uh, featurettes on that. Relic Knights 1.5. Well, you know, I haven't finished reading the changes and the adjustments, but what I've seen from the community, people are really liking what they're doing. There's been a mild resurgence in interest on that. We may take a look at it a little later on down the line. War of Hordes Mark III. Well, if you can't see, I've got some got some circles sitting right here. Uh, that one's hard for me to escape. I worked on it for such a long time and was such a pivotal part of a community in the Pacific Northwest. It's really kind of ingrained in my miniature background. So I still build armies and I still play from time to time. We'll talk about my thoughts on it in a few minutes. Dead Zone 2.0, right? Well, I always got Dead Zone in the in the scope uh, of the or the frame, I should say, because it's a great little game. Dead Zone 2.0, there's a new rule book, which is literally right here. So we'll probably take a look at the expanded rules, or I should say the streamlined rules in the expanded universe for Dead Zone and the upcoming Warpath as soon as that Kickstarter launches. I backed that one pretty heavy, so I should have a ton of stuff to look at on the table. Warpath, well, I just, I just talked about Warpath. Uh, Fallen Frontiers from Scale 75, they just announced that they are going to actually start um, pushing that out into retail space. Something I've been watching, um, been curious about. I backed the very first Kickstarter, backed out of it because I didn't like the uh, upscale of the models, and then they relaunched it, and I missed that Kickstarter, mainly because I want to see kind of how it plays out. But I will definitely take a look at it and give you my thoughts and ideas. And then we got Conflict 47 coming from Warlord Games. They had show of it at Gen Con. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to sit down and take a demo of it, but I know some people over there at Warlord, so it's a large possibility we probably see some stuff here on the table to take a look at and at least give a, a quick once over to the rules. Upcoming reviews. Like I said, I've got the Purple Lion Creations terrain. It's literally episode 55. So that's already filmed and ready to rock and roll. I just have to do the edits, which I'll do after this one, and then we'll get it up probably within five to seven days. Mob Miniatures. Man, I'll tell you what. It's a great little company out of Spain. They've got some really fantastic stuff going on. I've got a bunch of terrain over there in the corner for them. I've got some dark dwarves uh, in the in the closet. That Their stuff is phenomenal. I'm really, really impressed with these guys. I've got a couple of orcs that we'll probably take out and look at as well for my Orcs in Wonderland project. But that's something for the near future. Arc World. As I said, I already talked about that a little bit. Uh, and then I've also got a brand new set of secret weapon paints that we took that we will be taking a look at um, probably sometime within the next month or so. I think that's all that I've got here on the sheet, so we'll go ahead and get rolling with what I've got in front of me. Now this is my, you know, Gen Con kind of my loot, right? You can't go to Gen Con and not come back with a ton of stuff, because that's just kind of what Gen Con is. You go play some games, unfortunately, I don't play as many as I'd like to, and I generally only get time for, I don't know, four, five, maybe six demos on the floor, and then the rest of my time is filled with meetings and, you know, parties and things, the industry stuff. It's work, effectively. And I do always come home with stuff, right? And the first thing I'm going to talk about, board games, right? I know I don't feature board games here, and, and we don't talk about board games, but that doesn't mean that I don't play them. I love card games. There's certain board games that I really, really enjoy, and there's... A lot of times stuff that I want to grab because I really like the mythos or I like what's going on with the uh, just the, the box art, right? For example, Champions of Midgard. I love the box art on this one. I've had some uh, great feedback from friends of mine who play board games. This is getting good buzz. It's um, not brand new, but 
It keeps coming around to, hey Oz, you need to play this. It's a great game. You'll have a lot of fun with it. So this is one I'm going to bust out sometime over the next month or so, and I'm going to play it. Right? Again, because I don't cover board games, I'm really not talk about it much, but it is something that I'm going to put on my table in the near future. Seven Ronin, two-player game, so I'll be able to get this one out a little easier than, say, Champions of Midgard, because I probably want to do four-player with that one. But a two-player game, this one is killer. The theme is fantastic, right? Basically, you play either a, a, a ninja raiding party or you play Seven Ronin defending a village. I'm not going to get into details, but that's basically what it is. I'm raiding you or I'm defending against you. Mage Wars. Now, you guys all should know that I play a lot of Mage Wars, or have played a lot of Mage Wars, uh, since I moved to Georgia, not so much anymore. But this is a card game that I really, really, really enjoy. The new expansion, Paladin vs. Siren, released at Gen Con, they sold out, right? So a lot of hype around this one. Kind of a little sleeper that I, I have picked up before. Um, oh, PAX last year, I picked up this game called Gruff, right? It's a fantastic card game, two to four players. Super enjoyable. However, I picked up another copy because my last copy I actually gave to somebody else and tried to move it through retail space in a different way. I fanboyed out a little bit. I got the art book because Brent and his wife are phenomenal artists. I did pick up the uh, the Fluttermind mat because it's limited edition and you know you know how I am with that kind of stuff as well as a play mat. Gruff is a fantastic little game. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to play it, I highly suggest it. You play a goat herder, three crazy goats, literally crazy goats, uh, and it's just basically a back and forth combat game. Lots of fun, can be played really, really quickly, or you can extend it out uh, in regards to playtime. However, on a competitive side of things, I could see setting up an 8 to 12 man tournament in a store for this game really, really easily and having a lot of fun. Now, moving into the miniature space. Well, we all know that I worked on this game for four years. Uh, I wanted to see where it was going, so I picked up a book. The expansion book, Rising Conflicts, the new card decks, and then obviously the new units that they had available for the Greetsy. Nothing new for the Shale Han, but you guys know that I play the Greetsy and I play the Shale Han. Now, while I'm not playing this actively at the moment, doesn't mean that it won't change. It may or may not. And again, like I said earlier, War Machine, right? The, uh, the Getorix, Getorix, however you want to say his name. New Sculpt, right? It's beautiful. I actually busted open this box, dry fit everything. The fit is amazing. Plastic looks better than what it normally does. I also picked up the Mark III card deck for the circle. Crazy changes to Cassius and the tree in there. Uh, but other than that, that's currently where I'm sitting at with the uh, War Mahorts thing. All right, so we're going to look at Mythic Battles Pantheon. Like I said, I got a press release. And I got a limited edition figure only available to those who were invited to the press party. Uh, this is Achilles and holy hell am I super psyched for this game. So this is Rune Wars. We'll talk about that in a second. But again, Mythic Battles. So I've got a pair of expansions here. Right, This is a board game. As I said, we don't cover board games, but I'm going to talk about this one because it is becoming a miniatures game. So Mythic Battles is a game by Yellow and the development crew behind this, the guys that actually put this game together, are basically relaunching this game as a miniatures game and let me tell you I'm going to show you guys some some stills of some of the miniatures right now we're going to take a look at uh, pretty much kind of how this game operates but again the, the Mythic Battles board game is absolutely spectacular if you can find it I highly recommend picking it up there are two expansions to it expansion one and expansion two right they don't really have names and they might have names I don't know well yeah this one has the names tribute to the blood and the bloody dawn of legends but the simple fact is, is these games are built off of the campaign system where you play um, mildly in a linear fashion through a campaign set and the replayability is outstanding because you can play as different gods and I'm not going to get into that right now but one of the things that I will talk about, oh I just dropped something probably just the announcement folder, miniatures, right? We're going to take a look at the miniatures, plastics that are unpainted as well as some of the painted stuff but the press release for this was fantastic and the video amazing right so this has been kickstarted in October and uh, I'll tell you right now I'm gonna go pretty heavy into it because I am super super excited about what this is so you play as basically one of the gods and you assemble your little fighting force and you fight over an area of a map and again it's campaign driven 
is very much a spiritual successor of this. It feels like it, it plays like it, uh, and it, it is story driven like it. Now, I'm not going to spoil the story at all. You guys can go check out the website and take a look at that, and, and at that point, you know, make a decision for yourself. But the initial game is going to feature Zeus, um, Ares, Hades, and I believe Athena, if I remember correctly, in uh, basically a series of Mortal Kombat, so to speak. Size does matter in this game, as I'll show you in a minute. see that those figures not only are highly detailed but extremely varied in sizes and again like I said just just before we took a cut or like I said just before we looked at the figures we have multiple sizes and size does matter right your larger models are more powerful your base models or your smaller than base models uh, obviously your less powerful don't have as much of an impact in singular combats as say the gods and the larger monsters do but from what I saw, combat is fantastic. Models are amazing in the campaign system. They didn't reveal a whole lot about it, but what they did reveal about it feels very much like I said, the, the mythic battles from, from Yellow. Really, really, really excited about this. You can guarantee that as soon as possible, we will have some more reviews, some more news, and some more action on what's going on with Mythic Battles Pantheon. Okay, so. Rune Wars. If you guys are not familiar with this, again, this is a board game, and I know uh, I'm talking about a lot of board games, but there was an exciting announcement out of Fantasy Flight Games at Gen Con. Rune Wars is a miniatures game, and it looks pretty badass, I'm not going to lie. So it is a rank and file game, similar in scope to Warhammer Fantasy Battle, but right now there's only two armies that they have announced, both of them out of this box. So I'm assuming that if that launch is successful and it's a Fantasy Flight product, so we know it's going to be successful, we will see the other two races that are in this box come to play sooner or later. So to start out with, in, in the, the core box set, like I said, you'll get two armies. In those armies, you get a series of troops and basically a series of lockdown bases. And what I mean by lockdown bases is they interconnect kind of like puzzle pieces. So you've got little bases, let's say it's a foot troop, a spearman, or, or skeletons, you can put four in a selected lockdown base and then you can connect those lockdown bases with other lockdown bases to create regiments and basically determine how your army plays based off of how deep the regiment is or how wide the regiment is. The wider the regiment, the harder it hits, the deeper the regiment, the more consistent it hits. You get rerolls with that depth. So some very unique gameplay elements to Rune Wars the miniature game. You've got heroes, you've got big monsters, you've got this rune system where you've got five runes, basically they're, they're chits that have their double-sided circular chits. You shake them up, throw them on the table, and that tells you your magic power for the phase, basically. Um, you also have an order system, uh, similar in scope to uh, kind of what Confrontation did when you place little chit orders next to your units, but it's just expanded out a little bit. Now, I don't play Armada and I don't play X-Wing, so I can't tell you how they compare, but I know the movement system is similar. Now, as far as the order system goes, it, it could be similar to something going on in Armada, but I do not know. However, you got two dials. One determines kind of what type of move you're doing, and the other uh, dial is the modifier that you apply to that move or to the combat. So, very, very unique in, in its approach to miniature gaming. Really excited to kind of see what goes on with that. Again, Rune Wars, the miniatures game. So we're going to put that back. Now we're going to talk about my pick at Gen Con. So my pick at Gen Con really was kind of a, a, a sleeper surprise to me, right? This was in the, the dust booth. Former Rackham artist, um, Mohammed Ahmedi, and former Rackham designer, uh, Nicholas Rail. He also designed, or was uh, one of the design team in the Zombicide series from Simon. Great guy. 
Met him in person. Wonderful dude. Same with Mohammed. I spent a lot of time with Mohammed on Saturday and Sunday because this game really caught my attention. Now, funny thing is, is I sat down and took a demo of this game with my buddy Maurice, and the guy who gave the demo or hosted the demo, a longtime Legionnaire guy who used to do a lot of stuff for me at Simon, Eric Carlo. Eric Carlo is also a big confrontation guy. Um, one of the translators and um, you know an individual who generally does translation work in this industry, but somebody I've known for a number of years. He said, "He said, Oz, you're really going to love this game." And I looked at him and I was like, ah, "You know, it's just, it looks just like another miniature board game." He's like, "No, this is this is this is special." And he's right. It is it is special. So Drakiris, we're going to do a complete unboxing of the starter. I'm going to play the elves, and you're going to see a lot of this game on this channel over the course of the next year or two uh, because this is something special and something big needs to happen with this title and you guys need to, to help me with that. So I got the base starter set, I got the uh, Avern Elves Army book or Army box and I got the um, the expanded rule book, right? So I've got the whole core rule book. There's a rule book in each one of these boxes. We're gonna go over each of these boxes in detail. But there are a few things about this game that I'm going to tell you right now that really kind of set it apart. There's a couple of unique mechanics that are absolutely fantastic. So there's an opposing die roll table that is similar to what was in Confrontation. It's D10 based, however, not D6. And that table, depending upon modifiers, really depends upon what you need in regards to success to roll, right? D10 based, so your core... Your core zero modifier, if, you're, if you've got no modifiers, you need six or better for uh, a success result, right? If you have a plus one, five or better, plus two, four or better, minus one, it's a seven or better, uh, minus two, eight or better, right? All the way up and down the, the, the line. But very reminiscent of confrontation. Art style, they've got former artists, and again, Muhammad was a, was a sculptor and an artist, a uh, studio painter at Rackham. You'll really recognize it for those of you who were confrontation fans like I, I was and I am, you guys will recognize the art style. It'll feel home or like home to you guys. So sharing this one will be really, really easy for me because it, it feels um, and it looks and it really kind of has that special touch that Confrontation did. But it's different, right? There's some similarities to it, but the gameplay is, is completely different. Now, it's a kind of an alternating activation game, and I say kind of because it's got this unique mechanic called the time track. Now this time track is a board that sits kind of off to the side and each player has a, a little chit on the board and every time you activate a unit, whenever you do something, you move that chit up the time track. So I've got two action points, say with, with one of my core elven units and I move them and then let's say I shoot bows with them. So you'll move that time token up twice and then you'll put a stress token on that unit, or effectively that unit's card. And what a stress token does is it adds basically a plus one time unit to each one of those, those options. So the next turn when I activate it, I'm activating that unit, or adding plus one time unit to that movement every time that I do something with that unit. So I could in effect end up with two or three or four stress tokens on that, that uh, unit and I'm moving that time that time slider token, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight spaces at a time, and, and it happens, I've seen it. Why is that important? <clears throat> well, it's important because the person who is last on the time track is the person who goes next, right? So if I move and do something, if I do a big, huge activation with, say, one of my characters, and I move that time slider, or that, that shit on that time track up, say, eight spaces, well, my opponent could move three or four units in that period of time to catch up and surpass me. And so there's this really unique time aspect, manage, this is risk management mechanic to the game that sets it apart. Now, I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, but that adds time to the game. Uh, well, it doesn't. Maurice and I played a base starter set because we, we played the, the demo with the base starter set with everything in it. And again, there's, there's a ton of stuff in this base starter set. I mean, it's got like 30 miniatures in it, right? I, I was playing with two units, uh, or two base units, an elite unit, and a character, and Maurice had the same thing. We played the demo in 20 minutes. Now, of course, I'm sure there's advanced rules and some things in there that we didn't get into, but we played all the core rules. We played all of the, the options, right? I had shooting, he had magic, um, 
There were elemental things that were going on. There were, I mean, it was crazy. It was a lot of fun. It was a good time, and it really impressed me. As like I said, this is my pick of Gen Con, so I'm going to do a lot of coverage on this. You're going to see a lot. We're going to do a Dark Elf Army project, right? I mean, I've got the army box, but I'm going to get more Dark Elves in the house. We're going to have a big army because I believe this is only about 600 points. I want 2,000 for a standard size game, right? So gameplay, once we get to that size, I expect I'd be able to finish a game in an hour. Once I have a good core understanding of the rules and the basis premise or the base premise uh, of what everything does, hour shouldn't be an issue. So again, we're going to go ahead and cover the, the unboxing of the starter, and then we'll do an unboxing of the Elven Army box. We'll take a look at the core rule book when I do the unboxing of the starter, because I think those two kind of go hand in hand. And then we're going to do an army series with the elves. So coupled with that, um, there's another project that's coming up behind this because Mohammed asked me if I would cover Eden on the channel as well. Now I've had an inkling to actually look at Eden and get my hands on it, but I've never actually taken the plunge. Well, after talking to, to Mo and having spent some time with him, I really think that there is a good opportunity to grow that game in the United States and to really kind of show people um, what one of the, the, from what he's telling me, larger tournament game or tournament series games uh, that plays in France uh, can do here in the US. So I'm looking forward to getting some of that stuff. So we've kind of given you a quick recap of where my life has been, what's happening in my life, and then my Gen Con recap. Gen Con this year was ridiculous, it was absolutely huge, but I will say that. The, the planners at Gen Con made some changes this year to kind of how uh, traffic flow went. They made some changes to some of the larger booths to control line management. And for as big as it was, it felt a lot less crowded than what it did last year. Last year, I was shoulder to shoulder constantly. This year, there was a little bit of that, um, you know, during peak times and typically right in the middle of the hall. But because they expanded and opened it up quite a bit, and they did open it up quite a bit, it was much larger this year than it was last year, plus the extra added flow, Gen Con seemed to work a little better this year, and it was really kind of nice. I also got to spend some more time on the floor, got to spend some time with my friends, got to spend some time with some industry guys that I really like to hang out with, and you know, all in all, it was a great trip. I came back with some killer loot, I came back with some exciting news, I came back with a few things to look forward to, and man, I'll tell you what. I am looking forward to what's coming up in the next couple of months for the channel, what's coming up in the next few months for the industry, right? Rune, Rune Wars the Miniatures game, Q1 of 2017, more Drakiris, some Eden. Um, you, you know, I may, I may throw a Sylvanath Army project up in the channel. I, who knows? But anyways, there's a lot of stuff coming, lots of things headed down the pipe, and man, I am stoked and excited. What did you guys, if you went to Gen Con, really kind of get out of it? What did you bring home? What did you play? Share in the, in, the, in, the, in the comments below about what really got you excited. If you didn't go, what did you see in the social media channels, the, the YouTubes and the Facebooks and all that fun stuff that got you excited? What are some of the things that you really, really want to see covered? And if it falls into you know some of the things that I'm looking at doing, whether it's Dust or Relic Knights or Drakiris or Eden, um, Age of Sigmar, whatever. Y'all let me know, and like I said, if it falls into what I kind of have planned in my mind, obviously it's not on the board. That needs to be wiped down, cleaned up, and then changed out because what I have there is completely different than what I'm doing going forward this year. I've still got Project Modular Table right here to finish up. I need to paint it. Effectively, that's where I'm at. All the boards are finished and assembled. Everything is square. Paint's got to go on it. At that point, uh, we're ready to start using it to play games. So. Project Modular Table, we're going to see that here in the near future as well. Got some more terrain stuff coming. Like I said, we got Purple Lion up next episode. We've got some uh, Shantytown stuff for Miniature Building Authority that I'm going to go over. We're going to take a look at some of that stuff in depth and detail. Mob Miniatures, they've got some fantastic terrain stuff going on. I'm kind of on a terrain binge. We're going to do some terrain stuff because I'm going to set up for the new game. I'm going to set up for Age of Sigmar. I'm going to set up for 47. I'm going to set up for some more Dead Zone. Right, so we'll see some of that stuff rolling out. Again, if there's something specific you want to see, let me know. We'll see what we can't do to get it rolling. Now, I've rambled quite a bit, so I'm probably going to edit some of this out, cut it down a little bit because I'm sure I'm over 15 minutes. But anyways, 
Thanks for joining me on this special Gen Con recap catch up. And again, until next time, woo! We'll see y'all soon. Ha, 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 ha.